Hello and welcome back to another video here at Pragmatic Works. My name is Mitchell Pearson. If you like this video, make sure to take a moment and hit that like and subscribe button. We would appreciate it. Today in this video, we're going to be taking a look at the Git metadata activity within a pipeline within Azure Synapse Analytics. This is one of my favorite activities and, and mainly because it does have a lot of functionality, a lot of things that you can do, but it's also a great activity within the you know vast majority of activities that are there that really can teach you a lot about how to interact dynamically with pipelines inside of Azure Synapse Analytics, right? So as you're building a pipeline, eventually you're going to want to do more data-driven pipelines, more dynamically driven pipelines, pipelines that are automated. There's many different ways to set this up and many different ways to configure this. Maybe you have some kind of parent pipeline that figures out what work needs to be done. You take that work and you send it into child pipelines in an iterative and a systematic way so that you can make sure that every piece of work that needs to be done is done. You can reconcile that and make sure it's done. Maybe you're doing some kind of lookup to a control table, or maybe you're using a Git metadata activity to get a list of all the files that you need to process. This is not going to be a deep dive into how to build out that full process. It's going to be an introduction to the Git metadata activity, some of the capabilities that exist within that activity, and then how to read the outputs from an activity within Azure Synapse Analytics. So without further ado, we're going to jump right in. I'm in my workspace that we've been using for really the entirety of this series, and we're not going to build a new data set. We already have a data set from the last video. If you missed that, go back and take a look at that. In the last video, I showed you how to build a pipeline from scratch, how to build a copy activity, and how to build data sets. So as you remember, in the data hub over here on the left, we have our workspace, which will have any kind of databases in it, our Spark database, our Lake database, our dedicated SQL pools. But then we have a linked, right? And in linked, we have our data lake store. And that would be really any data lake stores that we link here. It can be more than just the primary. And then we have these integration data sets right here. And so, for example, we have holiday data. And if I open up that data set by just clicking on it, you'll notice right here that I'm connecting to this link service. That link service is pointing to my data lake that is the primary data lake for this ASA workspace. We talked about that long ago in the provisioning video. And then I'm pointing to training container, training data folder, holiday snappy parquet. So there's a folder there. There's a folder and a file there, right? We're going to use this data set for this version of the Git metadata activity. So in order to display this, I'm going to go ahead and create a new pipeline here. So I'll go over to the integrate hub and up here in the top right, I already have a very simple copy demo that we did in the last video. And I'm going to go ahead and add in a new pipeline. So I'll click right here. There's a little ellipses. Click on that. Tell it I want to create a new pipeline and that's going to do that. And then over here on the, the right, I'll just call this Git Metadata Activity, just like that. And then we'll minimize that. And what I want to do in this activity, you remember from before we went to the move and transform category and we brought in the copy data activity. There's a whole bunch more activities that we can do and we can perform within Azure Synapse Analytics. And so if I come down here to the general category, you're going to get a feeling for a lot of the different activities that exist here. Append variable, delete, execute pipeline, um, execute SSIS package. That's only relevant in very specific scenarios. Fail, get metadata, lookup store procedure, set variable, web activity, wait activity, so on and so forth. So in this video, we're going to be covering the get metadata activity. And when I grab that and I drag it in, just like in the copy activity that we worked with before, we're going to be able to see the properties of that activity right down here at the bottom of the screen. All right. And to make sure I wasn't blocking you guys over there. So this is the get metadata activity. Now the one, the little red one right there, what that indicates is that there's a required element, right? There's a required item that we have to configure on this activity. You're going to see that on all of your activities, right? There's always going to say, Hey, there's, there's something you need to configure here. There's something that's not configured here. So it's important to make sure that we configure that. On the general setting, we can give it a name, give it a description, set a timeout if we're worried about it running for too long. And then we can come over here and click on settings. And under settings, this is where you can choose either an existing data set or if you forgot to create your data set before you got here, you can click new and you can go through that data set creation process that we talked about and we went through 
in one of our prior videos, the last video, if I remember correctly. So I'm going to go ahead and choose this data set right here. And then we have this little option right here called filled list. And this is really the magic of Git metadata activity. There are a lot of different things that you can do. You can check to see if a file exists. Have you ever had a problem in an ETL situation where you needed to constantly check if a file was you know, there, if it existed before processing the file? So it might be one of those situations where you don't know exactly when the file is going to drop. So you can create a loop and you can put the metadata activity inside of the loop and you can constantly check to see if the file exists. And once it does, then you process it. I'm going to throw out a couple different ideas here and we'll probably eventually at some point get into some of these design patterns in this series. Or I'll start a new series that's just on activities within Synapse Analytics because I really like this stuff. This stuff makes me uh, kind of makes me excited a little bit. So we could do exist. We could check the number of columns. Now, obviously, that's going to be more relevant to like a database to a table, not really to a flat file. You can check the name of the item that you're connecting to. You can get the item type. You can check when it was last modified. So let's do that. I'm going to check last modified. I'm going to add a couple more fields here and we're going to check a couple of different things. We have last modified. We can check to see if the file exists. We can also get the item name. And then of course I can come down here and let's just get maybe the size. Now there's a lot of different use cases for these different items, the different fields that we're bringing in, how you might want to use them, like last modified, right? One of the things that I've done for many years is help customers build out an ETL process. And sometimes I have customers that had lots of files or they would get a, just a very big file. And I would have to check if the file that, that came in, if it was a new file, right? Is it new since the last time I loaded it? Because if it's a new file, I need to load that file again. If it's not a new file, I don't want to process that file, right? So if I can check the last modified date of the file and compare that against a control table that stores the last time I loaded the file and the file, you know, last modified date is greater than that, then it means I need to process the file. Exist, we already talked about item name. If you were dynamically looping over a list, we're not doing anything that dynamic in this video. Item name would be really important. And then of course the size of the file, maybe we use that for validation verification purposes as well. So what I want to do here is I just want to run this, right? There's not, I'm, again, I'm going to, I might talk about a couple other pieces here to kind of, I'm going to show you a couple tips and tricks, but I'm just going to run this real quick by clicking on debug. Now I like to run this from debug. I like to run it right here in development so I can see the output and it's easier to kind of talk about it. Obviously we could have published. And one thing we haven't talked about is once you publish, you can click add trigger and you can say trigger now. And that is a manual execution, but you can't see the output right here. You have to go back over to the monitoring hub, but you also can't run it until you've published and you saved your work effectively and essentially to your ASA workspace, right? In production. So debug is nice because you can make some changes. You might not be sure you're ready to publish. Maybe you don't want to publish. Maybe you just want to run something real quick one-off kind of situation and delete it, burn it to the ground. You can do that with debug right there. So here we go. It ran. What does that mean? Well, you'll notice if I come down to output here, it starts to give me some information. First of all, I can look at the input. Now there's not going to be a whole lot of input here. It'll tell me the data set name. It'll tell me the field list. And that's really about it. Now, some, obviously if I were running an execute store, you know, an execute SQL, um, activity or I was running some other activity. Let me think about this for a minute. You know, a store procedure activity, um, a web activity where you're passing values in. Those would have some pretty good information, some very interesting information in the input, which is great to come back and look at if by some chance you run your pipeline and you're getting results that you're like, I don't quite know about this, right? I think these results should be a little bit different. Well, maybe they're wrong because the data, the input was wrong. The parameter was wrong. Maybe you had a parameter and you forgot to change the value of the parameter and that's why it's wrong. So this gives me a way of debugging, validating and checking to see if it's running the way it's supposed to, if the parameter is going in. Again, we have no parameter set up here, so that's not something we have to worry about. Now we also have the output. Now you'll also notice that this is JSON. This is JavaScript object notation. It's very human readable code. It's a lot of it's just key value pairs. You do get into kind of these like nested objects, but this right here is what I'm looking for. Last modified. So you see it's output, output dot, last modified, output dot exist, output dot item name. 
by calling the name of the activity at activity, the name of it, dot output dot last modified that will return the last modified date of that file that you see right here if i do exist it'll tell me that the file does exist now if i were to go delete that file right now or move it to another location archive that file right it would now return false we would also not get information in some of these other pieces right last modified and things like that so this is the output now the way that you reference this inside of another activity is through the expression language inside of vision you know through pipelines right through the expression language the only way i can really kind of show you that language is to open up one of these other activities and connect the two and then show you where you can see that information at so let me grab one of these probably i could grab maybe the set variable but i'd have to set a variable so we won't talk about that probably could grab the i think i'm going to grab the for each activity or I'll grab the until activity. I'll grab the until activity. And so let me go ahead and click away from that. I'm going to connect these two. Now, one of the things that I love that they've changed recently, that if you're watching this, you might, oh, it looks different, is they've added in these little precedent constraints on the side that make it easier to find the one that you need. This is really important. So let me point out a couple of things. One, this is me saying that I don't want this until loop to run unless this activity runs and runs successfully, right? So after it completes successfully, then I can run it. Secondly, if you want to reference outputs from this activity, so you want to know the last modified date and you want to pass that until and into this activity here, whatever this activity is, you must connect them, right? So for example, if I go into this until activity and I go into the settings, you'll notice I can set an expression here. And when I go into the expression, I'm going to set an expression that effectively evaluates to true or that should evaluate to true because once it evaluates to true, the until loop will stop. So it will loop until this condition is met. Now, this isn't a video on the until loop. Don't worry about that part. Let's just focus on the dynamic content. So again, what have I done here? I brought in the get metadata activity. We configured it. We set it up with a data set. Super easy. Not a lot of configuration there. We ran it. We looked at the output. We looked at the JSON. Now we talked about this precedent constraint. This is how we control the order of operations. I brought the until activity in here for one single purpose, just to be able to look at the expression language so you can see how to reference the output from an activity. In a minute, I'm going to delete this activity. We are not going to complete it and we're going to publish our work. So now if I go into the until activity and I go into the expression editor, a required element is you must set up an expression that evaluates to true if you were going to do this. I'm going to click on dynamic content. And when I do that, it opens up over here on the right an expression builder. In this expression builder, you'll notice I have activity outputs, parameters, system variables, functions, and variables. Out activity outputs is really what I'm looking for. Now, all of these activity outputs here, you would not see them if there was not a connection between the two activities. So when I brought that precedent constraint over, very common mistake, if you forget that, you won't see those activities. But what I could do is I could just bring in this right here and this exist property right here. At activity, the name of my activity, which was get metadata one over here, that was the name, dot output dot exist. That is the way that I call that property from that activity. Fortunately for us, if you go back to my YouTube channel long ago, you'll see that I taught something similar to this, but th we didn't have this like nice little, um, these elements here that would just be able to be pulled in. We had to be able to figure out all this on our own. So this is really cool. Thank you, Microsoft, for doing it. But this is actually a true state. This is a valid statement for the until loop. This is going to either evaluate to true or false, right? If it evaluates to true, it'll stop the until loop before it gets started. It'll move on to the next step. If it evaluates to false, then it'll run all the activities that are there. Unfortunately, if you come from an SSIS background, you're like, Mitchell, go ahead and run the expression. Let me see the result. We don't have that here. There's not any, you know, validate, there, there's not a button that says, hey, run the, the code that I just did and show me the output of it, right? Like if you were building some kind of string expression, you, unfortunately, it doesn't let you do that. So that's not a capability that we have compared to maybe some other ETL tools that you work with. But what I could do is I could run this in debug, test it out, make sure it's doing what I wanted to do. Guys, that's it. I wanted to keep this video short. I wanted to keep it sweet, hopefully under 15 minutes. We'll see where we land. 
but this is, I'm going to delete that until activity. So down at the very bottom of that until activity right here, there's a little trash can. I clicked on it and I'm going to get rid of it. You could also just click on it and click your delete key on your keyboard. I'm going to go up to the top. I'm going to click publish all. I want to make sure I publish all my changes. And so now I can come over here to the right and I might be a little bit in the way. Nope. Perfect. We're going to click publish and that's going to go ahead and publish all of our changes. And that's it. We're done. So the get metadata activity, it is one of the first ones you learn. It teaches you about dynamic content, how to reference the outputs. And then hopefully, I don't know, I haven't quite figured it out yet, but in some of my future videos, I want to go through a lot more of these activities that exist in Pipeline. So if you're excited about that, if that's what you want to see, definitely let me know in the comments below. Make sure you hit the like and subscribe button. And I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, we'll see you next time. Thank you, guys.